communism. Yeah. Oh, come on. Or no, well, no, no, no. Well, you said, okay. Reality is that this is a giant scam. And this, again, is a bipartisan problem. But In what sense is our society male-dominated? These are some of the best moments where you will see woke people getting humbled with facts and logic in these one-sided debates. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Haley, I got some questions for you getting into some of your notes. Yes. Um, in your pre-show notes to us, you described yourself as a socialist. Yes. With an interest in... Traditional values. Communism. You okay, Nick? And communism. Nick, you okay? No. Okay. Um, you said, okay. Sorry, go ahead. You said you, interest in communism? Communism, but also like some traditional values. Communism? Yeah. Oh, come on. Or no, well, no, no, no. Well, you said, okay, so. Well, that, see, I, I don't, that's why I say socialist, because I'm still like full doing my deep dive into communism. I find it very interesting that someone as big as her is a communist. She literally looks like she ate the means of production. I don't know why she would want to live in a communist country because of the fact that communist societies suffer from starvation. I don't think she's going to enjoy those bread lines, that's for sure. Hateless society. Um, to, to a degree, it's just well, everyone common. helping everyone, that's everyone having homes, everybody being able to like have some kind of food, water, shelter, clothes, like I feel like the recklessness that you've been kind of referring to is part of it is like people like stealing because not because they want to steal and because they want to be reckless, but they want to resell the stolen merch so that they could buy their baby diapers or afford formula. And so I agree to a degree some of the reckless behaviors going up, but I think also part of that is there's people that do want monogamous, the nuclear family thing, but we can't afford it in this economy the way like inflation's going. It's like, there was an article that was like, millennials don't want this, they want to downsize, they want this. We, I, we would like marriage, we would like, not everyone, but there is, but it, the government and society hasn't set us up like that. So, I mean, if you're into this whole procreation thing and like that's like very important to you, wouldn't communism like make sense because everyone would have everything they need the and therefore we would could, could yeah. focus on procreation so all i'm hearing is yap right here to say that poorer people can't have families is just blatantly untrue the poorest countries in the world have some of the highest on average birth rates in the world and communism does not solve the fertility crisis problem if so why did the birth rates decrease under soviet russia is you're making a materialist argument Okay. So, and so let me let me just walk you through it. What you're saying is, right now we have the best standard of living that we've ever had in history. There's more materialism available to anybody than there ever has been. We have cell phones and we have big screen TVs and we have these great cameras and we have all this electricity and these light bulbs and all the clothes and all the new cars and all the this and all the that. If we just added more materialism, wouldn't people have children? I think she's saying if we evened it out. I not, I don't even, th I'm not even thinking about that. I'm thinking just like the minimum wage. Yeah, but general. right, but all these people have all of these things already intact. They already have the houses, they already have the money, they already have the everything. They're still not I having the children. I think a lot of them do. They do, and they're, the, you want to know who has the children? The people who don't have that, the poor people. The people who have no money, people who have no housing, the people who live poor, those are the ones that have the most amount of children. Poor people, disproportionately, overwhelmingly have more children than all the rest of the segments of society. A lot of that has to do with lack of resources though, which could be government funding. So then it can't be a material answer. So it can't be a material answer to my question of when you say, if you want people to reproduce, shouldn't you give them more material means? Like, well, every time I look at the people who have the least amount of material re means, no. they reproduce the most. The not even material means. Well, if they're I, that, I don't understand how they have the most material means, but they're also the poorest because I'm not talking about material means. I'm just talking about no, no, no the least. I said the, like, the least. So the they least, have the okay. least amount of material means, and they still reproduce the most, even though they have the least amount of materialism. So that's not gonna help me with my goal. Okay. Just to make Andrew's point more apparently true here, the working class in America has the most children. The fundamentals to this, the big problem you have with this worldview is when even though you think of rights in a different way than I do, using your kind of reasoning for what a right is, does do you ever have a right to anybody else's service? No. Well then communism can't work. And, and free healthcare can't work. And none of those villain. things can work because, because you're saying 
you don't have a right to the services of others. I don't think she actually read the Communist Manifesto. I think she's just LARPing because she got told that communism was about equality, even though it's far more complex than that. And I think she would hate a communist society, and that's clear from her own answers. There to be more conservatives that are trying to participate in academia, but I feel like the leading thought or the leading speaking out against it is basically saying it's a waste of time, it's completely lost. So I, I think that the alternative to that is mm -hmm. that you're, you're seeing on the right a growth of, for example, alternative universities. Saying yeah, you but that's the worst thing. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so at all. I think competition is a great way of incentivizing some change on, on behalf of universities that may have forgotten that there's an entire another side of the aisle. I actually do agree with Destiny here as going to college to become a lawyer or a doctor is very useful and will help you have a good career in life. Also, he's correct about how conservatives should strive for conservative representation in elite positions. Politically speaking, it's very good advice. If you're a conservative, of course, as college is where the production of new elites happen. Where I disagree with him is, in general, college has a lot of useless courses that won't get you anywhere but a massive amount of debt and a job at McDonald's. Reality is that this is a giant scam. And this, again, is a bipartisan problem, but it's just a generalized problem. The, we, we have... Hey, you want to talk about things that hurt the lower classes in the United States? The bleeding of degrees up is so wild and crazy. There's so many jobs in the United States that should not require a college degree that we now require a college degree to do because there was this weird idea that came over Americans where they mistook correlation for causation. They would say, oh, look, people who go to college are making more money than people who don't go to college. Therefore, everyone should go to college. Well, maybe the reason is because people who are going to college were better qualified for particular jobs because on average, not all the time, but on average, a lot of those people were smarter and making more money because of that. And so all you've done is you've now created these additional layers of stratification. So a person who used to be able to get a job with a college degree now has to have a postdoc degree in order to go get that degree. A person who used to be able to just graduate high school, now it's de facto, you gotta go to JUCO and then you gotta go to college or nobody's gonna look at your resume. It's really, really terrible for people who can't afford all of that. It's led to this massive increase in educational cost that is inexplicable other than this particular sort of bleed up and by the way, federal subsidies for higher education. Again, one of my problems with federal subsidies for higher education, I'd love for everyone to be able to go to college if qualified to do so and if it is productive. But one of the things I did when I went to law school is I took loans because a bank said I was gonna get my money back if I got a law degree from Harvard. But you know when you're not gonna get your money back? If you're a bank, you're not gonna lend to some dude who wants to major in you know art theory because is that a good bet? There's no collateral, right? If, if I give a loan for a house, I can go repossess the house. How do I repossess your garbage college degree from UCLA? There's no way to do that. So you know, one, one of my so yeah, this is the broader conversation about education in general. I think the educational system is cruising for a bruising, and I think all that's necessary for it to completely collapse on the non-STEM side where you actually learn things is for people who employ to simply say, give me your SAT score and I will hire you for an apprenticeship directly out of high school. In what sense is our society male dominated? Uh, the fact that the vast majority of wealth is owned by men, the vast majority of capital and is owned by men. Women do more unpaid it's a very, labor. very tiny proportion of men and a huge proportion of people who are seriously disaffected are men. Most people in prison are men. Most people who are uh, on the street are men. Most victims of violent crime are men. Most people who commit suicide are men. Uh, most men, most people who die in wars are men. People who do worse in school are men. It's like, where's the dominance here precisely? What you're doing is you're taking a tiny substrata of hyper successful men and using that to represent the entire structure of the of Western society. There's nothing about that that's vaguely- She seems to believe that every man in history since the dawn of time has had a royal red carpet rolled for them wherever they walked. I wish that was true, but in reality it wasn't so nice because, well, they had to fight wars and battles constantly. Let me tell you my political philosophy. I'm a, I guess I'm a social democrat, so what I believe is that you should, if you have a good life, you should try and pass that on. I believe in a progressive redistributive tax system, for example. It was once said by Lord Mandelson in British politics, you know, but New Labour was okay with people being filthy rich as long as they paid their taxes. Now, I'm kind of less okay with people being filthy rich. But Define what I do, filthy rich. Well, that, I think I would leave that You're to... You're probably in the top one-tenth of one percent of people who've ever lived on the planet. That would constitute filthy rich by historical standards. Okay, but I'm not so sure where, that where I'm going to line exactly? be able to help the Neanderthals at this point, really, by giving up some money. But this is my point, is that what I believe is, and I believe in a structure in which people who have had a good life and had lots of advantages should pay that back, pay that forwards. Which I think is the message that you preach as well, right? You have responsibilities. Anyone who seriously believes in this communist style of thinking typically has never practiced it. If she was deeply serious about what she believed in, she firstly would quit her cozy job as a media person. Then she would give a lot of her wealth away to the people in need and then she would live in a working class neighborhood and get a working class job. Of course she would never do that these champagne socialists never do. 
I think I'm benefiting actually from a lot of things that I don't support that are unearned privileges in my life. I think that's absolutely true. Like your job? Like I have a very good job. I had a loving family. Who, who, well, I don't think that's going to do the world any good, is it? That's a hell of a fine rationalization for your privileged position. Oh, well, fair enough, but I, you know, if you I, could trade it off with someone who's less privileged, I could that'd be a start. I could, I could do that, and and uh, but I don't, I don't want to, and I and I won't, and I don't think I should be expected to. Why not? Is it okay for you to occupy a position of privilege in the patriarchal tyranny? And if it is, is it because you're female, or is it just because it's convenient? And there it is. You can imagine my shock by that shocking answer. Are you telling me she expects everyone else to follow her ideology and practice it, yet she doesn't want to herself? Well, I am deeply surprised by this. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to hit the subscribe button and comment below if you want to see more of these. And have a good one.